What's going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMP, IA, and part 147 school instructor back with another video. This time I'm gonna be trying to get the Musketeer running. I got the Cessna 150, which was over there running the other day. Um, I will preface this by saying that this Musketeer is haggard dog water, and I'll show you more of that in just a second. I have not worked on this airplane since I was a student here 12 years ago. And even then, it was not this bad. To be completely honest with you, I'm a little nervous about putting a battery in it. I'm gonna try to figure out where some of this stuff is at least supposed to be going before I do that. Um, but I do have a battery for it. Um, everything Firewall Ford's looking pretty good, but I wanna try to resolve some of this first before I even attempt to crank this thing. I am gonna go ahead and pull the door off completely. It's just a piano hinge that should come out really easy. And I'll answer the question of why I'm going to try to get this thing running, or at least see if it runs. First things first, I'm just going to see if it'll start. Um, truthfully, we actually want to get rid of this airplane. We would like to scrap it. But if the engine runs, if the engine operates, selfishly, we can steal it. And I say that because I wouldn't mind buying uh, like a Hats Classic kit or maybe like an RV3 or an RV6 kit or something, uh, conventional gear and stealing the engine off of this for it. It's not gonna be something that's ever gonna be airworthy. In fact, what I'd like to do is cut the wings down so that it's narrower than 12 feet and we can take it on field trips. We can take it to like our, our tech fests and our stuff like that as a showpiece uh, for the college. But before any of that can happen, I need to see if I can get this thing running. So I'm gonna go ahead and That disconnected wire looks like it goes to the amp meter, but for some reason it's not tied back into the main bus. It's kind of wired directly to the master switch, which is a little weird, but I'm not gonna worry about it. What I am gonna do, since I've got the go, went ahead and put the battery in it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the master on and hit the starter and see if it will at least crank. If it will crank, I'm gonna put fuel in it because I know the fuel tanks are empty. Let's, I guess let's see what happens. So I gotta be honest with you, I kinda knew that was gonna happen because I seem to remember one of the other instructors saying that they had hot wired it or something so that it's wired directly to the ignition switch or the master switch and it's not going through the main bus anymore which is like i said a little weird but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get fuel in it spray a little starting fluid maybe we'll get lucky i don't know let's fight let's see okay so i got about 15 gallons in the right tank the left tank is still empty but i've run into another problem and i'll show you what it is here is the fuel selector. Like I said, this airplane is haggard dog water and I'm struggling to figure out which position is on. If you turn on the fuel pump, you can see the fuel pressure right there and I can move it, but it doesn't seem to matter what position it is in. There's nothing happening with fuel flow. It's just, it's not getting fuel up to the pump. So I might have a solution. So here is my theory. I finally got the fuel selector figured out. What I ended up doing was cracking open the lines and turning it until I started to get a little bit of fuel to run out. But the problem is it comes out of the fuel selector and up the firewall and then down into the sump. So unless the tanks are completely full of gas, fuel is not gonna make that jump and the fuel lines are completely empty because it's been sitting. So I'm gonna try something a little weird. I'm gonna take this obnoxiously long air chuck and I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure in this tank and then I'm gonna check the fuel sump and I'm gonna see if I get fuel out of the sump. I don't know if that worked. All right, here's a fuel sump. Let's see if we get a little bit of fuel out. It's, it was dry before. Oh, yeah, there it is. That might just have worked. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get the fuel pump to prime now. I think, I think I have the fuel pump primed. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I know that sounds weird. I'm gonna give it a big shot of starting fluid, which I would normally never do on a certified aircraft, but this is at the school, so who cares? I'm gonna give it a big old giant shot of starting fluid and see if maybe it will fire over because I'm not sure how the mags are working. I can't hear the induction vibrator firing. This is a shower of spark system, so it's not an impulse coupling and I can't hear the induction vibrator vibrating. 
so I'm not sure if that's working, but I'll give this a shot. It fires. If I can get fuel to it, maybe it'll run. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm pretty positive there's no fuel going to it. I put myself through an unnecessary amount of torment on off camera, I should say, to figure out what the problem was, but I did figure it out. What was wrong is the fuel selector was indeed in the wrong position. There's no placard. I had messed with it earlier and I thought I nailed it, um, but I guess not. So I tried it in another position. I pressurized the tank. I got fuel out of the strainer. I took the fuel line off the carburetor and I, tr and I tried it again until I got fuel off the line for the carburetor. And then I hit the fuel pump and made sure I was getting fuel to the carburetor, which I am now. So I'm gonna try to prime this thing with just the carburetor and the priming system, and then I'll see if it'll start. If you look very, very, very closely at the very top of the nose strut and the bottom of the cowling, you can see the smallest wisp of fire coming out. I am going to give the starter a little bit of a break. Um, I know I'm getting fuel to the carburetor. It just doesn't seem to want to fire. So I'm going to investigate that just a little bit more, but I think it's almost lunchtime. So I'll see what I can do before lunch. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if you could see any of that on camera, but this thing was just on fire. You can see a little bit of, maybe a little bit of smoke coming off that fuel line. I don't know how that fuel line managed to catch fire, uh, but it did. So I'm gonna do what I should have done to begin with, which is get one of my coworkers to help me and have a fire extinguisher ready. Safety tip there, everybody. Sorry I wasn't filming that. I was cranking it just to try to clear the induction manifold of any leftover fuel and it fired up. And since it fired up, I pushed the mixture in uh, real quick and got it to run. It's not really wanting to uh, accelerate though. So I'm, I'm wondering if uh, 
the fuel pumps clogged, or if maybe there's just not a fuel, enough fuel in the float ball, but I feel like that was a win. I'm gonna count that as a win. I got it running. That counts. If I end the video here, I, I end the video here, but if not, I'll, I'll keep going after lunch. But that is an excellent place to stop and go eat some lunch, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'll catch up with y'all a little bit later. Word came down from Top Brass, and we've decided that we're gonna go ahead and scrap the airplane. And by scrap the airplane, I mean we're gonna steal everything off of it that we can, but I'll, I'll show you why we made that decision. First of all, we've, we've had this airplane like 20 years up here at the school. It's been here a long time. Uh, but these fuel lines, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. These fuel lines and whatnot are just so corroded um, and deteriorated and torn up that as soon as they get any sort of fuel pressure, they're just leaking. So we're gonna go ahead and steal the engine off of it so that if we need a run cab or if we need a good running engine, we'll have a good running engine because I did just prove that it does in fact run. Uh, it just needs fuel lines and maybe controls and some other things, but those are somewhat easy to replace and somewhat easy to do. So that's gonna do it all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy next week or next time or I don't know, eventually, that one is next. That is the final airplane that I need to get running. Sorry, you're crooked. That is the final airplane that I need to get running out here, but I know it needs a continental fuel pressure adjustment, so I might get it running, but it's not gonna run very well until I get the stuff to do a continental fuel pressure adjustment, then it'll probably run great. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.